Hello, it's me, Neil Brennan. This is the Blocks Podcast. My guest today, I've known for 16, 17 years. First time I saw him at the Laugh Factory, I thought, oh, fuck, if you cut to this guy in a movie, he immediately would get a laugh. Just the sight of him. Do it now. Great. You see how funny that was? Uh, he's just a, he's a ob- observably funny motherfucker. And then the fact that he could write jokes and he had a point of view, it w- to me, was a miracle. He's had one or two Netflix specials, Comedy Central. I think you were on Last Comic Standing, man. Yeah, I won. He won last comment. Not only was he on it, he fucking I beat them. He beat them. He thinks he's funnier than all you fools. Felipe Esparza, ladies and gentlemen. Felipe Esparza. What's up, Neil Brennan? What's How you up, doing, buddy? Fool? Good, good, man. Good to see you. You're, do you think your career is going good? I think it is. But I think just, it is. From the outside in, I'm like, I wonder if Felipe is happy with how it's going for him. I think about um, Kevin Hart's career. Right. And people at that level. And the amount of interviews they gotta do every morning uh-huh. and preparation for uh-huh. a lot of things, and I'm I'm like, yeah, I like the little roles, yeah, the little side roles where I just do, get invited to the red carpet and that's it. Felipe, there you go. Right, you don't you're not in it. Are you in the movie? Nah. <laughs> you just you'll show but up I for the party like, and the free food. Like um, I'm I'm, I'm known, but. And I, I, I like the way I'm known, like this level. You all right? That's people always talk about that. I Tig Nataro was on here, and I said I would like Kevin's career in that. If you, if I'm going to Philly, I might as well do the stadium. Oh yeah. Anyway, do you know what I mean? Like if I'm going to Philly, any if I'm going to Phoenix, I'd rather do the arena than the theater, or the club. But I also know that like I'm. I'm like a niche compared to Kevin like and you're in the same boat where it's like well no we're not for everybody but you assume that the people we're for have found us and and enjoy us and by the way we both make great livings I mean look at how we're dressed um <laughs> uh we both make great living so it's like there's no complaint I don't find and do you find your fame level ever overwhelming or like inconvenient no yeah that's the thing so there's no but it is also like it is it that's a positive it is never inconvenient like i know the places where i know i'm gonna get a lot of attention and places where i'm i'm gonna just gonna be having a good time just a regular guy where yeah. where do you get a lot where are the places dodger you? stadium as soon as i walk into dodger <laughs> stadium i'm like fernando venezuela bro <laughs> is it everybody every just most of the people at dodger stadium as soon as i step in Parking. Like a lot of my, not, not parking also, but once I walked into the my seats, I, I was so full, everybody. Because I used to work there too. Oh, great. And I threw out the first pitch when I won last comic standing. Oh, that's awesome. My wife surprised me with tickets to go to Dodger Stadium opening day. Okay. I was, I was trying to find something to wear. Okay, what if I get on TV? So I just wore my big full tour shirt. Great. But it's orange and black. Okay. And right away on the comments, people were noticing, oh man, why are you wearing San Francisco giant colors? Right, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, you'll get killed at Dodger Stadium. So I took a bunch of photos with people and they went to my seat. But the, it was like. It took like 35 minutes. Yeah, that's exactly the yeah. kind of thing It's you don't want to, it just takes too long. If yeah. if someone's super famous there, you either have to be, it's either going to take forever to do anything or you have to get like security and go through that. It's also cool that there's also people who don't know who I am. Yeah. Or just wondering, what's going on here? Yeah. I feel like Selena, you know? <laughs> like in a movie where nobody recognized her, but all her fans came up to her. It's Selena. It's Selena. Hey. So what's going on Selena. in here? Hey. It's Selena. Huh? Who's Selena? She's here for the Grammy. You feel like Selena and you look like the woman who killed her. I did, man. Is that one of your jokes? No. My, right. One of my jokes is that um, every uh, every time I go to Texas, I want to hook up with a woman who looks like Selena, but I end up sleeping with a woman who kill, looks like she killed her. Beautiful. We're all doing the same. It's all yeah. the same. It's all the same. Joke. It's, it's all, all thinking. Ian Edwards has a great so the woman who shot Selena joke. I And what's great is I barely know what she looks like, but I feel like she's the woman who shot Selena. I In my mind, in her photo, she's wearing a windbreaker. She looks like... 
Arnold Schwarzenegger, baby mama. Fantastic. Even now we're just insulting anyone, but now everyone's catching strays. All right, you have a wild story that you once told on my old podcast, The Champs, about how you got involved with, you had like a bad, you did drugs. Yes. You used to, one of your blocks is addiction. Walk me through, tell people who don't know your story, to tell them a version of your story. Including the Terminator 2 night, please. Oh, uh, <laughs> which story? The one about... The one when you smoked meth and went to... Oh, yes. But t- you can tell the whole story, just include that p- portion of it. I'm trying to remember how the day started. Oh, the day started like this. Um, Terminator 2 was going to come out. Right. And it was coming out. Friends, it was out. It was that, already out. It had been out. out. So this is the summer of 1991. Yeah, 91 or 92 when it came out. It was 91 because I remember and, my friends and I, we went to go see Terminator 2 at the drive-in movie theater. Okay. And I was dressed like exactly like him. Like the Terminator. Yeah, except I didn't have a leather jacket. Just had a white T-shirt and the, the boots and the jeans. <laughs> Got it. I was, think, I was gonna take somebody's jacket like just like him at the end of the night. Sure. <laughs> but um, my friends and I were drinking um, Long Island iced teas. The ones you buy at the liquor store, they're like, 32 ounces, like this big. Mm-hmm. And we poured, we just snuck it. Well, we were drinking them there and we were smoking PCP at the movie theater. PCP. Again, yeah. people who don't know what PCP, it was a, it's, it's angel dust. They called it angel dust. They called it PCP. It was embalming fluid. It was literally what they use. It was formaldehyde or like what they, it's embalming fluid powderized. I always thought something. it was elephant tranquilizer. I've heard both. I have yeah. no idea. But okay, so either way, now this is when did you start doing wild shit like this? Like just smoking PCP? Probably when I was 21, 21. Okay. So you, so what were you doing before that? I was just drinking a lot. Okay. Like every day? After high school, every, I was just drinking like when I had a girlfriend at the time, every Friday with her. Okay. We would both buy a 40 ounce of Old English or Mickey's Big Mouth. Mm -hmm. And, we, we knew a store that sold to kids. Great. So we would go there, high school kids, and yep. we buy a, two 40 ounces. We'll walk to Hollenbeck Park and drink them and have sex in the park. Literally. Literally, yeah. <laughs> on a bench, on the grass. On a bench, hurling on a tree. Fantastic. Yes, good times. Great times. The 90s, the late 80s and 90s, ladies and gentlemen, you missed it. Because now I think about it because once what a scary type to be at at that age. Because right now I wouldn't do that. I'm like 16, 17 years, no, I'm, I'm like 17 years old with another with a woman who's 16 and we're at this dark park that's controlled by a, a vicious gang, <laughs> Dirt Street. You know, they pretty much chase anybody who doesn't. You know what's funny? It doesn't sound like a vicious gang. Third Street. There it just Third sounds Street. like a decent group. Maybe it sounds like a restaurant, honestly. Third but Street. they were... Uh, was Crips? The, what were they? Third Street was uh, like the where I lived was a, a gang that was mainly Chicanos. Like they were all born here, but they're all Mexican. They're got it, Chicano, got it. but that gang was mainly people f- who were from Mexico. They were like immigrant got sons it. of immigrant kids, so they spoke more Spanish. They got they got bullied on by the other ga- all the other gangs, so so they would chase everybody out of that park. But I'm now I'm think when I think about it now, man, I must have been fearless, you know, to have a girlfriend and a forty answer late at night, walking around the park by myself with her. Yeah, it's that well, yeah, that ain't you don't first of all, your brain's not formed. <laughs> it literally is not formed. And you have so much testosterone that you'll there is no such thing as too risky. And you're to the point where it's like, all right, it sounds like a dare in a horror movie. Yes. Go fuck a 16-year-old in a gang-infested park <laughs> at night at and night. begin. And you and you were and but it didn't it was and you did it repeatedly. Repeatedly. Every, Every Friday, Friday night. <laughs> and it wasn't and how long you think you did it for? Till we broke up. For like a year? A year, yeah. Did you ever deal inner interface with the gang? Did they ever say, like, no. what are you doing here? I dealt with more gangs when I was hanging out with her on her porch. 
because there was more gangs over there. Where, where got it, lived. got it, got it, got it. Where she lived, there was at least, there was three official gangs, and there was like four group of guys that hung out together. Like, <laughs> like there was this guy with long hair. <laughs> Right, it's like at one point. Do you at what point do you become? Well, you know what? I think we're officially like a gang. one. Of the, there was a, for sure. There was a crib gang, and then there was these two Mexican gangs who didn't get along with each other. What do you think of gangs? As what did you think of them then, and what do you think of them now as an adult? Do you just think like, what are you guys doing, or do you understand it? Now I don't think um, I don't see that many gang bang members because they dress different and. Um, they stay home a lot because of TikTok, and they're mostly gangbanging on TikTok now. Just like insulting each other, insulting on TikTok? each other, or they get into a rap. They get into rap, and they start insulting each other, or <laughs> or an ex gang member starts a podcast. Then he goes after another ex member that started a podcast. So they're doing their own thing, <laughs> yeah, yeah, at a different level now. It's violence by different yeah, means. So I don't live in the in the neighborhood where the gangs are anymore, so I don't see them. But I know people still get shot. Growing up in the way you grew up in, like, where was the name of the? It was a Boyle Heights. Boyle Heights, right? So you grew up in Boyle Heights. What do you think of the way you grew up? Is it? Is it? Do you just think like, fuck, that was hard. Now it's better. When you're in the neighborhood, when you're in that environment, you you don't see it. You don't see it with outside eyes. So you don't. You're you're part of the environment now. You don't see it like. Whoa, look where I'm at. Because you're already right. in it, you know? Right. You grew up in it. N well, looking back, what do you think of it? Wow, man. I can't believe I survived that. I have, I'm shell I, I think I have PTSD from living in a neighborhood. We had a page just for our neighborhood. It was called the Pico Aliso, Aliso Village, Pico Garden, Housing Project Facebook page. And everybody from that grew up in the 60s in that neighborhood, 70s and 80s, they would leave comments like, oh, I grew up on Via Las Vegas Avenue. I, I grew up on um, um, New Aliso, right? And then one day I wrote, and I just random, you know, I, was, I was on the road somewhere. Hey, man, does anybody have nightmares or anybody have dreams that you're still in the housing projects, living there and everything's cool? Then, then you start hearing like um, these weird noises, like uh, maybe um, like I don't know how to. I just read like weird noises, or or you hear um, or you're 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 on drugs, or somebody's chasing you, or you hear um, bullets all the time. And then and somebody and some people came in. Yeah, fuck yeah, me too, man. I had a dream last night that I was um being chased by LAPD. Yeah, yeah. And so it's like gangs, LAPD, poverty, just like. A, a, just a convergence of things and then no one's told hey this is gonna fuck you up for a long time you're gonna be dream. you can leave this you're gonna be haunted by it a little bit and then you become an adult and you're kind of and then everybody else is like oh yeah i didn't even realize you're not supposed to be haunted by it i know it's like i blocked everything out of that on my mind you blocked it out of your mind yeah like, like right now like as we're talking I'm having flashbacks of things I saw that were like, whoa, man. Like, yeah. Yeah. Sorry to bring it up. Because I remember when I was in Little League, there was this guy named, his name was Larry. I guess Larry. And my, my coach's name was Bulldog. <laughs> I don't know his real name. They call him Bulldog. Sure. And he was, Larry was like a, a, a assistant to the assistant coach. He would just hang out, you know, yeah. with us. Like if they're like if they're hitting balls with other kids, and they're he's playing catch with the kids who are not hitting balls. If there's um the everybody's doing something, he's running track with the kids. Like he's doing yeah, he's just he's involved. The auxiliary, yeah, like yeah, help, yeah. So everybody thought, oh, Larry's cool, man, whatever. Then one day, man, during a little league game, this guy is on PCP, bro. Like this, he is gone, bro. Like gone, like not not violent, but just gone, like. His mind is not there no yeah. more. He starts yelling out, free, man, free, homes, free. He starts doing like, like he's giving up umpire signs and all the kids and we never seen shit like that. I was like 10. I was like, what the fuck, gay? Eh? And um, he starts taking off his clothes and he's butt naked. Like, and he run around the bases. 
And um, <laughs> this isn't even violent. This is just like what growing up like that will do. To, like then you need drugs. Then you yeah, need, just then, like um, the ecosystem. He, um, finally, bulldog grabs him. Hey, fucking Larry, put your clothes on. <laughs> and nobody called the cops. And um, he was never assisted to the system again. And <laughs> yeah, like that was the end of his. That was it, career. man. Yeah, he, he he didn't even go to our games, and that's not even that's just a little slice. Yeah, and, but I remember another time, like walking, leaving. Um, we we're on our bicycles, and we we're leaving um the park, and always. Uh, yeah, that's another thing I asked on the on the on the Pico Aliso page. Hey man, do you guys remember? Am I making this up, or is there a was there ever a a red party that used to come to our neighborhood when we were like eight or nine. I don't know. They were, we used to call them the people with the red flags. And, he, and then somebody wrote, yeah, man, those motherfuckers were communists. He goes, they were big, they were communists. He goes, they were a neighborhood pumping us up. You know, they were like, they were rallying around us. I didn't know they were communists. Were they Cuban or something? They were all different nationalities. Yeah, like what were, why they pick your neighborhood? Just I don't know. But um, I remember coming out, of, they came, there was like around 50 of them, and they had like red flags, and they were waving them, and they were talking about, um, if the, like, fuck the police, fuck whatever mayor's there, right, yeah. man? And, but they were they were like trying to rally everybody, and they would show up, and um, they would pass out um, pampers to single moms, and... Um, feed people like, like they'll set up a little sandwich place to give out sandwiches and then um we didn't think much of it some people tell them will tell them to fuck off get the fuck out of here i remember one guy this guy i guess he was a blood he grabbed one of the red flags from them and he put it in his cadillac <laughs> <laughs> we're coming out of the game and a big fight starts all of a sudden there was like a lot of those guys this time like set more than uh, the red flag, yeah, people. the red flag people. But then it started like their their protest was ending; they were leaving. Some of them stood back, and then like more people came from our neighborhood. It was like, um, and they got into a fight with them. And I saw one of the guys get stabbed, or uh, like repeatedly, bro. Like my friend and I were on our bikes, like like watching a movie. On, uh, yeah, and he's getting stabbed and stabbed and stabbed. And uh, they killed him. They killed him, man. They killed him. And everybody ran, runs, and then we're like running with the crowd to our neighborhood. And we see the guy that stabbed the guy. And then this other black dude tells him, hey, man, they, you just killed a guy over there. He goes, didn't they kill the guy, man? He goes, the guy with the red flags. Then the police show up, LAPD, and they only arrest the red flag people. Like they beat their ass and they put them all, they arrested them and they put a sheet over the guy with the, that was murdered. And I always wonder, like, who was this guy? And I, everybody on the page didn't know. I went to San Francisco and there was a lady selling books. And there was a book that somebody wrote about that day. Really? The guy's name was David. Was he like a significant? He was a communist, and he was—I uh, don't know if he was communist, but he was red. He was a red flag a socialist, probably. Um, he had already bombed or burned a alley or a police station somewhere else in another state. That oh guy. yeah, that's not gonna—you're not gonna—the cops aren't gonna be nice after that. Who who stabbed him? I thought it was a guy from the neighborhood, but later on, you know. Fake news. It starts saying, "Oh man, it was an espionage. It was a cop." And well, we didn't know, man. But right, what did it look like? It looked like he was just stabbing a gang like, fight. Like, but did the guy? It just looked like a regular gang fight. Yeah. Well, that's the nobody right. got arrested though. So do you? All right. So then you start. You start drinking. Eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Like 16, 17. 16, Okay. And then, do you think you're doing it because it's fun, or do you think you're doing it because you're like trying to deal with all this shit around you? I don't know. I think it was just for fun at yeah. first. Yeah, and then when you say at first, when you mean like, and then you started realizing like, oh, I'm, uh, I can kind of escape this shit, or did you even care? When I started drinking by myself, that's when I realized it was not, it was just to get away. 
Got it. But when I was with my friends, it was just fun because I had a bunch of Native American friends who lived in the neighborhood. They're, they they're took gonna, us the young gonna, drunks. Yeah. Instead of young guns. <laughs> and we would buy, we all had good, we, had, we used to work for um, Western Electric in Canoga Park. So we got paid well. And um, we used to buy a case of beer each of Budweiser. And we used to challenge each other to see who finishes first. Yeah, that's, you're not going to win that. And then we were in the housing projects, just listening to Ozzy Osbourne and get Great. Black Sabbath, Iron Maiden. Fantastic. I'm sure you've heard me talk about Mando Whole Body Deodorant at this point, haven't you? They sent it to me, and I've used it. I'm using. I used it today. It's it's in the it's in it's in not even the rotation. I only have one deodorant, and I use it. You can use it on your whole body. Yes, your whole body. It's dermatologist tested and gentle on all your little bits. It controls odor for 72 hours, clinically proven. You can choose from four cologne quality scents or unscented if you want to go stealthily. Mine is the the Mount Fuji. I'm wearing it right now. It goes on smooth. It I don't get it on my clothes. I believe it's I've gone three days without a shower. If that's if you need that kind of information, I put it on after I take a shower. That's when I put on my deodorant. And I also put a little on my, my upper back's been sweating. Don't worry about that. I put some back there just to test it. It's doing good, everybody. It's doing real nice. It's the deodorant stick. Yeah, you know what else? It doesn't sting. You know how sometimes these things sting and you're like, huh, what's going on there? Is that me or them? It's them. It turns out it was never it was never me. My body's perfect. I truly cannot recommend this product enough. Are you ready to make the upgrade to Mando? Here's a special offer. New customers get $5 off Mando's best-selling starter pack with code NEAL at shopmando.com. It smells good. I wish you were near my body. Mando's starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant. That's what I'm into. Cream tube deodorant. Two free products of your choice, like mini body wash and deodorant wipes, and free shipping. Luckily, I have a discount code to help you get hooked on my favorite smelling whole body deodorant on the market. New customers get $5 off a starter pack with our exclusive code that equates to over 40% off your starter pack. Use code NEAL at shopmando.com. That's S-H-O-P-M-A-N-D-O dot C-O-M. Mando. Mmm. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Hey, what's something you'd like to learn? As an adult, do you make time to learn new things as often as you'd like? Or was that lost in childhood? Kids are always learning and growing, but as adults, sometimes we lose that curiosity. What's something you'd like to learn? Gardening, uh, skateboarding, roller skating, a lot of skate ones. You know what I realized recently? I want to, I need a more, I need to pursue more, uh, a spiritual practice like daily because I, it helps. Therapy can help you reconnect with your sense of wonder because you're back to school era can come at any age. All right. I benefit from therapy. I talk about it a lot. And the thing that therapy made me realize was just it, you talk in therapy and you hear yourself and you can kind of glean what you want based on the things you talk about in therapy or even like the things you're envious of or the people you want to emulate. In my case, it was more like, I want to be, I want to admit that I want to do stand up or I want to be a director or whatever. I had, I finally like admitted it in therapy. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Rediscover your curiosity with BetterHelp. Visit B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot C-O-M slash N-E-A-L today to get 10% off your first month. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash Neil. BetterHelp dot com slash Neil. Go there, start therapy, become a better version of you now. Okay, so the, we got a flashback to the Terminator 2 day. Terminator 91. Had you done PCB before? Yes, at okay. a birthday party. Of course. My friend had a birthday party for his son, and when everybody was like... It was a kid's birthday party. It was a kid's birthday party, <laughs> man. And um, they were smoking PCP, and I just went to the wrong crowd, and they passed it, and I took it. And then um, I felt good. You didn't even know what it was? I didn't even know what it was. I want to be part of that. Was it a joint or pipe? It was a Newport cigarette, a Coos, because most, most PCPs that were sold in my neighborhood were, were like pours. They were a little bottle of liquid. Got it. So um, the majority of the people would use menthol cigarettes, and okay. they would just 
dip it dip like it. ten dollar, twenty dollars, or all the way in fifty bucks. Oh, for that like half. Yeah, got it. And you smoked it, and then said, "But did you say like, hey, what is this PCP? Oh shit, or was it like this feels great? What is it? It felt great, man." What at first it, I was like, like at first I was down, like really down, like, oh man, I can't move. Like I couldn't move my hands. But then after when I could move my hands, I felt like a uh, like a lot of confidence. I felt power, like strong. And is it it is that thing of like it, you feel superhuman? Yes. I remember watching this guy on PCP in a movie and I go and I realized I want to be like that. He was fighting <laughs> like ten cops. Yeah. Like that was King, the thing with you know? cop, with PCPs. You yeah, like could. Rodney King. He was on PCP. Oh, I mean, yeah, that... <laughs> I don't think he did... I don't think it helped him in that scenario. But sober, he would have went down. Yeah, oh, right, yeah. right. He, But he wasn't, like, getting up and being like, come on. He was, like, always... The whole time he was, like, getting pretty... He was pretty wrapped up. Like, I got to be like that once, too, man, but there was, nobody recorded it. Huh. Or maybe they recorded over it. <laughs> like, <laughs> I would could say it was, it was. I remember I, um, I said, yeah. I, people, I say I got to be bad, man, because people say candy was curving out of me. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> but did you? What, why did you get beat so bad? Oh man, um, because I was in a, I was in a gang where they had like rules not to smoke PCP. Okay, because it, it was. It just because then everybody smoked PCP, you become the PCP gang. Correct. Yeah, everybody walks want... over you, uh-huh. and that's to smoke crack either or or, or primos or any, anything. But they only wanted you to do weed, mushrooms, acid, and beer. Okay. But I did everything else but that. <laughs> and I was older than everybody, so I didn't I didn't care for the rules. Yeah, they're not going to tell you what to so do. So one day, I don't know where man, I get approached by like fuck. 10 people and they all jumped me the from your gang yeah because you were smoking PC because you broke the rules did you ever think like this is why be in a gang if you can't do drugs that, that was what that was what i was saying yeah like a bunch of square ass motherfuckers <laughs> what are you it's like the same thing the cop whose side are they on well a lot of the the homies were getting locked up for being on pcp okay and for being on crack being crack what was hits. the point of the gang were you, was it a business at that time, I have no idea what was going on. When so I stopped, you would just get together and do what? By the time I stopped, and I'm glad I did, it became a business. Crack? Like it's more, or, or more organized. Crack, whatever? Yeah. Got it. Because when I was in my neighborhood, when they were selling drugs, it was like a free market. So it, like you, anybody who lived there could sell drugs, but now you can't do that anymore. It has to be the same. It has to be the gang of that street, of that corner, Got of it. that zip code. It's all, it's all, it's been gentrified. <laughs> um, all right. So tell me the the PCP story, the Terminator Two day. There was this guy who came out of prison. I always say like this old motherfucker, but he was like thirty. <laughs> <laughs> That's old enough. I was twenty one. I was barely twenty one, and um, he started like um. I was just hanging out by myself, you know, after the Terminator sh- movie. Mm-hmm. I left my friends. I was not with my friends anymore who saw the movie by myself. And this guy, he'd been like picking, bull- trying to bully me or trying to give me like backhanded compliments, you know, and be mean. And um, he's not funny like me. Like right. I, I, could, I could hurt his feelings. Yeah. So I finally did, you know, I said, listen, man. And I hurt his feelings. Everybody laughed. They laughed. He got upset, and he and he punched me in the face right away. And had a, my eye. Well, I was dizzy, man. Like you're not on anything at this point. Well, I'm on PCP. Oh, you're on PCP. All right, great. So he punched you in the face. He punched me in the face. And by the way, on PCP, were you funny or on PCP? I'm just curious, comedy wise. I was funny, but all the jokes that were coming now were like, "Oh, we're gonna have to fight now." <laughs> <laughs> it's like he said, like if you were, he told me. Uh, Oh man, you ain't shit. He goes, that's not what your wife said last night, man. And everybody goes, ah, oh. got it. He punches me, and then I punch him. But he's getting the better of me because he, he he's a way better fighter. 
I'm one of those guys that uh, that'll just punch you in the face. When I was at that age, I was one of those guys that would just cheap shot you. Got it. Or while you're talking, I you knock you out. Got it. And I won the fight. Great. Like that. That's the way I lost fights too. Like somebody knocked me out. Oh, you would get cheap shotted. Yeah. They would Felipe you. They but would- I, I think I, I'm the one that tried to cheap shot him first. So that's what happens. Okay. And I missed. Oh. I was on PCP. <laughs> Damn it, PCP. So when I missed, he punched me in the back of my ear. And then when I turned around, his other hand hit me in the face, like right in my eye. And then since I'm not a fighter, I, went, I, I reached out to rub my hand instead of blocking my face. He hit me again with the other side, the other side of the face. <laughs> so by this time, I just grabbed him by the head and I just bit his ear. Sure. This is 1991. Mike Tyson. Yeah, it was I think six Tyson. years before Mike Tyson. Oh, and some nasty stuff in there. There needs to be a bite almost. When I saw Mike Tyson do that, I, I knew that um, his mentality in his head, like why he did that. What is knew, it? He's You're, losing. Yeah. He's losing. And you just now, it, now animal you're instinct go for your, Yeah. You're losing and in your head you feel you're gonna die or this person is gonna kill you. Yeah. So you gotta go for your animal instincts. Yeah. Before I held him, he was already was choking me already. Like when I was holding him, he let go. I, he he got out. You little devil, you. He got out. And then he was choking me. And that's when I saw his ear and I pulled his head closer to my mouth and I bit it. And did you? Oh, he screamed, man! Did you take a chunk of it? Yeah, to spit it out. How much? It was like a the tip where the earring goes. Got it. That's pretty thick. Yeah, and I, man, a lot of blood came out. It was all over my shirt. Then um, I started just, I took my belt off, started whipping him like a runaway <laughs> slave, you know, <laughs> in front of everybody. And he's there. He's got half his quarter, a third of his ears gone. Or about a quarter, and you and he doesn't run away. No man, this guy's a this guy's a hardcore gangbanger. Yeah. So and then you took off your belts, and your and I started whipping him, and the rest of that is a uh, blank to me. Got it. after that, I don't know what happened. Yeah. Okay. Then what do you do? I blanked out for I guess six hours, maybe because I don't remember anything after that. Six hours later. So like you remember just like your point of view, yeah. whip, whip, dudes, da, 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 and then you come to and where are you? I'm holding a a hot beer, a forty ouncer, and it's like half full, but it's really hot. But I'm still drinking it. The hot. sun is hitting my face. It's day. Yeah, so it's, it's like the next day. The next day, it's like ninety degrees. It's hot. My shirt looks like I'm someone threw a bowl of menudo at me, but it's all blood, you know, and my shoes are bloody. And then somebody told me, like, hey man, you can, oh, I, I, I have a big black eye too. I look like I'd be, I, I look bad too. My face looks bad. And everybody's telling me, man, he goes, you should clean up. He goes, you don't look too good. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, you should see the other guy. Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't say that. Then I, I, I go, what happened, man? I told him, what happened? He goes, what do you mean, what happened? He goes, you started finding that guy. And after that, you started chasing. You started chasing everyone with your belt, not just that guy. You're like Larry from the from the little league game. I'm like Pootie Tang, bro. Bye bye. Yeah, shit. <laughs> You're Pootie Tang. <laughs> Sad I'd say. So okay, but didn't you then like you? The guy was after you. I kept partying more. Two more days. Two more days. So yes. There was just a way to stay. There were enough available people to fuck with to party. Oh yeah, with. man. The housing projects. So you just be like, what? Do you, and you kind of know everybody. Yeah, I kind of know everybody. And you have a good. Your reputation is like you're a funny dude. I'm a cool guy. Yeah. Cool. All right, great. So, and I'm, I'm I'm also part of another a different gang from that neighborhood too. So you're two timing. Yeah, I, I live in a I live in a gang now. I live in a, with a with a gang that I'm not from, but I, my mom lives there, so they don't do me nothing because my mom lives there. Great. But as I grew up with everybody there. Except right. the guy that, that I beat up. I didn't grow up with him. He was in prison the whole time. So now when then so you keep drinking, smoke more PCP. Smoking, and um so one of the one of the, the guy's friends comes up to me with a bat and he swings it over my head, like at full speed, and he misses. And um I told him, Hey man, what the fuck? And then um 
uh, I, I threw my friends at him. Man, fuck, get this motherfucker off me. And then they just take the bat away from him. And he's an older guy too. And um, oh, you're, you're, oh, bam, you fucked up my friend, la, 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 la. Oh, man, you, you sent him to the hospital. He's in there with broken ribs, la, la, la. And I said, I didn't know that dude was in the hospital. Yeah. Like this whole time, I didn't know. Like this whole time. Like two days of just partying. The cops are telling him at his bed, press, are you, who, who did this to you? Tell us, press charges. Is he a slave owner? You're covered in whip scars. Um, Is it a T-100? Who did it? <laughs> yeah, so, so, so. He says, no, I don't know who did it. Okay. And then he goes, and then, because he's going to handle it himself yeah. when he goes to the hospital. And then, so the guy swings a bat. You hear about the guy being fucked up. Are you apologetic or are you like, oh, I got to get the fuck out of here? Oh, hell no, man. I'm like, he got, he got what he deserved. Got it. Okay. Street, you know, man? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that, that, uh, you live in that neighborhood, all you think about, oh, he got he, he, he had it coming, you know? Yeah. Okay. So then what happens? My mom speaks to Father Greg Boyle from Homeboy Industry. You tell your mom what happened? No, nah, I don't know what happened. They already know. Okay. They saw the clothes. Okay. They saw the clothes. They said, well, he he, he either killed somebody or he murdered. They almost he's killed in, him. Yeah, he's in, he, fucked, he fucked somebody up and he's going to be in so, a lot of trouble. Now or get murdered. The, now these guys all want to like beat me up. and I'm not really afraid because I didn't think it was that big, you know, big of a deal. But it was a big deal. And my for my mom to go talk to a Catholic priest. Sure. And they go to my house. Look how stupid I am, okay? I have uh, two cousins who live in like Santa Paula in Ventura County and they're well off. Like th their dad is a homeowner and he built homes everywhere. Like he was hired one time to go build homes in Vietnam for the people. Like his construction company, he's big, man. Yeah. This is how stupid I was. I thought that, um, cause we went to their house to um, hang out. Yeah. This is after it, when they were looking for me. I thought that when we went to their house, I thought that I was gonna stay there like Will Smith and a French Prince of Bel Air. <laughs> you have the right house. I am Jeffrey, your uncle's butler. Oh, okay, well, uh, cheerio and all that rot and I. opportunity. Bring the horses around, would you? <laughs> That's it. this is after you bit the dude or just okay after. got it. like a few days after, after like all right well this is I I I lucked out I thought I was gonna live there and learn the construction company uh huh and what was actually started happening? off picking you up just, nails you just happened to be there they your mom just my mom my dad took me there because we we're gonna that's my dad's cousin but nah man they didn't take me there okay and then how's Greg Boyle get involved so. Father Greg Boyle drives me to to the um, to a meeting at a church in Narcotics Anonymous, and then I intro they introduced me to the the pastor from the rehab, Jesse, and then they take me to rehab. And beyond the like an ambush, though, because I never agreed to go. Yeah, they just told me to pack your stuff. You're leaving. You got jumped into rehab. Yes, basically. And do you do you think that was right? Like looking back, are you like, oh yeah, I was a narcotic. I I did belong in NA. Now I think when I think about it, yeah, I think it was the right thing to do. I didn't want to be there. Right, but you had a drug problem. Yeah, I was smoking crack a lot back uh, afterwards. I went like on a crack binge after the meth. <laughs> yes. or, I'm sorry, after the PCP. Yes, uh, before Greg Boyle. After I was jumped for doing all those doing them extra drugs, I kept doing it up. I didn't care. You didn't learn your lesson. Yeah, and then I was doing. Uh, People would give me crack to sell, and I'll just smoke it, and and I just wow, well, what Take are you the do? I'll beat his ass, you yeah. know. But then it, it got to too many people like that, so I would go to rehab. <laughs> you must have, that, sounds, like, sounds like you got good at getting your ass whooped. Yeah, like you kind of know. What are some tips if you're getting your ass whooped? Just cover up, or oh man, if, if it's five of them, try to get too close to the biggest one and cheap shot him first. Like knock, like try your hardest to knock him out while he's talking, okay. and then when he's down, go for the smallest one right away. And then you got the middle guy, and 
he's gonna be too afraid to get knocked out, so he probably won't jump in. <laughs> Are you an elbow person or a fist person? Fist, yeah, man. I don't. Yeah, I have a broken finger. I have no knuckles anymore from fighting. From not knowing how to punch. Because <laughs> 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 I, I guess you watch MMA now and like Nate Diaz, like the way the, the, yeah. it's the way they hold their hands and. When you know when you don't know how to fight, I guess you don't close your fist right, so you broke you break a finger or you break a wrist, you break your hand. Yeah, that's me. All right, so you go to NA and then and you t- do you actually stay clean? So I go to NA and then I go to the the Live Again Recovery Home in Saugus, California, and and it was in the mountains, bro, like badass mountains. And a, a bunch of guys, a bunch of older guys were there. I was the youngest guy there. Everybody was my 50 years old, 40, 49, 60, 52, 38, 30. <laughs> no, nobody in their 20s. Yeah. I was the only crackhead there. Everybody was there was for heroin. Yeah, that's funny. All heroin. And they were all, some of them were like kicking heroin, you know? Yeah, that looks like fun. Uh, yeah. what you just did the thing about those places to me is like you get to speak about your emotions and shit or it was um run really well it was run like a course the whole like we're all living together they ran it like okay in the morning you will get up at 7 30 and then you will go to um mass like a like a daily like the today's word is work harder why do we work hard and then they'll, they'll talk about the daily like a, a quote yeah that's at seven thirty. Then we go do chores real fast for like forty thirty five minutes, like raking yep, the whole sweeping, area. Yeah. Then we go to breakfast. Then um, classes start. Like the first class could be a A meeting, and then the next one is a narcotics anonymous meeting. The other one is um, I forgot the other meeting was, but then like seven people who are crazier will leave in a van to go to an anger management meeting. Ah. And then we will stay there. On Sunday, everybody would you would, go, you, would you go to anger management? No, no, I never. I would argue with them when they came back. <laughs> How come you just don't get angry, bro? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, there was this one guy. He used to wet his pants. You know, I don't know why. I guess he was going through his issues growing up psychologically, I guess. Uh-huh. As soon as he stopped doing drugs, he said he said, he, said he became a bedwetter again. And I was like, he goes, were you always a, and he asked me, were you, were you always a bedwetter? Yeah, I goes, when I was like five and six. But then, but you were a bedwetter when you were a heroin addict? Never. <laughs> but then he said, he's a bedwetter again. So anyway, he was also an anger management class. Yeah. So he would always leave. So did you do, doing this stuff, did you feel like, oh, this is actually kind of cool and helpful? I did. I loved yeah. it. Because I thought I was, because I would like school anyways. So being part of a, Were you good at a routine, yeah. I mean, I didn't get A's. I didn't get all A's, but um, at one point I did have a B average. Great. But I love school, man, because, you know, you get to hang around people. Yeah. So it's I just like, like the socializing yeah. part. There's a so, yeah. So and, um, f- this guy came in. Um, what's his name? Tim. His brother Tim. He's like a, a Jesuit brother. Because, mm-hmm. you know, they, they have mothers, they have sisters. Yeah. He's a brother. He's like what Nacho Libre is. Yeah, okay, I got it. Yeah, he's that guy. He came. He he would go to the rehab every once a week to talk to um anybody who's Catholic or anybody who wants to join the meeting. Cause not everybody in the not everybody in the rehab was Catholic. Yeah, there was one Jewish guy, one Mormon, one Muslim, and the rest were Christian, Pentecostal, and the other half was Catholic. Yeah. So he would talk to us about stuff, mental stuff, I guess. And we, we, he, he would give us little things. How do you feel today? And then everybody would just write it in and turn it in. And then he, and then he would just rip it. He never read it. And, um, and everybody would give me, what the fuck, Holmes? <laughs> I put up what I did right there, Holmes. He goes, no, you know he goes, just, just, he goes, just, goes, just, it's just a, 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 me, a learning thing, he says, something like that. Nobody really got it. I get it now. 
he just wanted everybody to just ponder the day and you yeah. know, so sometimes you go through your um when you start focusing on all the bad shit, but everybody everybody who wrote in the list only wrote the good shit. They didn't uh, write the bad shit. And they were mad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um all right. And did you and did it feel like it would be helpful for I always don't you feel like those places would be helpful for kind of anybody? No, because a lot of people quit. Not everybody made it. I remember um, seeing a heroin addicts like stay up late at night, struggling, you know, for it. And then, did you struggle? Was no. it like did you weren't kicking? Right, mine you, is about mental. To, in what way? Where you feel like a loser and you're crying all the time. You're depressed. Did, is that how you felt? Yeah. Did you feel like that? Like a loser. Why? Because I think because um because I think co- crack is the upper. Yeah. So you're up, man, and you feel like you feel like you're a, a thousand bucks, a million bucks. Yeah. And I was like, I loved it. I like doing it. Yeah. And, and then so to not so like you had all those like chemicals in your brain released and yeah. then to come down. But what do you feel like as a what do you feel like normally like? Because did you are do you consider yourself sober now? Yeah. I haven't done c- drugs like that since '09. You smoke weed? Yeah. Uh, and you mushrooms, drink still? Yeah. No, I don't drink. So you do? You smoke weed and do mushrooms? Yeah. And but I don't drink. Yeah. Uh, why don't you drink? Because I think that that's that was my downfall was alcohol. Because whenever I would drink, if I would do drugs, I would do cocaine, I would ah. do PCP. I've never touched any of those drugs sober. Huh? Like I never woke up in the morning and go. Let's get down. Let's get some coke. Man, yeah. So always let's get some. Let's get some Hennessy. And some then that's Jameson. the gateway. Got it. And then and then that'll lead you there. Yeah. I need I need something to lead me there because I, I guess I'm a big wimp. I don't have confidence. I lack a lot of confidence in life too. I guess you know inner confidence. Yeah. So I think alcohol it helps me take it to the next level. I can't go there without alcohol. I know that now. Okay, so now how do you behave? Is your life boring without it? No. How often do you do shrooms and smoke weed? I smoke weed like every day. Okay. Shrooms only when I when I like, like if I'm like I'm not gonna do nothing today, and then I feel like I wake up bummed or I saw the wrong video today in the morning, or what's a what's the wrong video? Um, a bunch of hyenas attacking a bison, and then the the baby inside pops out in a little pouch and everybody rips at it. That is the wrong video. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you don't want to see that. <laughs> uh, so I block now, like when I, they pop up, not interested. Not interested. Yeah. Okay, and do you, is it easier to be you now than it was when you were 20? Yeah, it is, man. In what way? When I was 20, I, I had a, a a baby already. From that woman that I used to get the park, to, yeah, the park. Right, <laughs> we got her. I got her pregnant in high school. Sweet. Uh, that's when I became a raging alcoholic as a single father. That's when I drank the most because I was not doing drugs then. I was just, I was not even smoking pot. I was just drinking, and she didn't want me to drink, but I wanted to drink. I don't know why. I just wanted to drink. Maybe I didn't want to deal with being a single father at nineteen, but. I remember, it's like, it's coming to me like it was yesterday. I remember getting off of work and coming home. And I'm going to go take a shower. And I put like a bubble bath and um, the doors loud. And I and I take a six pack of Bullwise out of my backpack. And I get drunk in a bathtub. Listening to the doors? Yeah. Fantastic. I love your playlist back then. I had to, man. I was... The soft parade has just begun. <laughs> That's so funny. And did you? And now you're that that baby's an adult. Uh, and do you, what are the stresses of your life now? I get real nervous when I have to do like a meet, like a meeting. I don't know why. Where I gotta meet a bunch of people. Like I, I was panicking before this podcast. Were you really? Because the Uber driver dropped me off. I, the first number I saw when he dropped me off was. 2255 and it was 2228 i don't know the address or 42 right, right. Well, yeah 
48. But then I saw, oh, okay, the, the numbers jump big here. Because you go from 10 yeah, 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 yeah. to 80. How do you do yeah, that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you thought you were lost. Yeah. And, and yeah. then I was like, what am I going to say? I don't want to sound stupid. Neil oh, really? real is, smart. That what, <laughs> is that what you think? Like that you, is your worry for yourself is that you're, you're going to look stupid? Yeah. Or sound dumb or say the wrong thing. I mean, if you want to know what I, as a quote unquote smart person, whenever I would you look like you're going to be stupid and then you your jokes are so fucking hilariously smart that it's like a double they'd be funny jokes anyway <laughs> and then the fact that they come out of you makes them like doubly satisfying i'm always i'm everything you say surprises me literally Everything you've ever said, I'm like, I didn't know that he was going to say that. I didn't think you were going to be listening to the doors. I didn't think you'd bite the guy's ear off. I didn't think you'd write like your sobriety story. I don't think you take why you take mushrooms. I didn't know what the wrong video. Everything you say surprises me. So like you, I've never thought Felipe is too, but I've always thought like that guy's brilliant. He just, he just, you're, and you also look like you're supposed to look. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you, this is what you're supposed to look like. Um, so I'm, I'm pleased. <laughs> so you've satisfied me in every possible way. Cool. Like as a person, as a comedian, my question is, you mentioned the, you had a stuttering problem. Yes. Um, which I'm, it I'm almost came out right now. Still do. <laughs> <laughs> I I I shy I surprised you. When I was yeah, I didn't know that. Ah uh, man, I get like when I think about my um, speech impairment, my stuttering problem when I was a kid. And then I, I think about my 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 school, my elementary school, the exactly where it was located. It was like you know it was so, my my elementary school was inside the projects, like. Like something like all these other elementary school, when you cross the street, you're in a neighborhood, or yeah. there's a Starbucks, or there's there's life. My school, as soon as you got out, you're back in the projects. Like you could see the school, you could you're playing in a playground. You can see the the projects, man. You could see people fighting and drinking, smoking weed. Oh, so I guess there was more money back then to be thrown at. Schools, especially my school, which was in uh, Allen Unified School District. I mean, nobody in the neighborhood is a taxpayer, you know, but I guess money came to that school. There was enough money for, I guess, all the schools in Los Angeles, plus our little school, that my teacher noticed they had a studying problem, and other teachers started noticing the other kids. So they grabbed all the stuttering kids out of the class, and they, they put them in one class for uh an hour once a week so they'll put us together and they'll, they would help us try to enunciate and um we became the that class ended up being the speech class of the school so whenever there was an announcement to be read we had to do it <laughs> <laughs> It's like a. It's obviously funny, but it's. I get what they're doing. Yeah, but I would. They would give me the Spanish ones, so I would have to read in Spanish, and then read in English. But I didn't get it because right after I stopped reading, I went back to stuttering. That's so you could do it. it when you did it. When you did the announcement, you don't stutter. You know, there's a whole movie called The King's Speech. Yeah, yeah I didn't see it, but he had to memorize the speech, right? I don't know. Oh, I didn't see it. Uh, but I, that's what the whole, I think the whole thing was about the, uh, so you would, could do it without stuttering. Yeah. Why? I don't know. Magic. Magic. <laughs> yeah. I could read it. I could read it without stuttering, but I just couldn't say it without stuttering. And did you, you said, so it's, it's a combination of that plus just domestic violence. Yeah. And it sort of put a hiccup in your nervous system. Yeah. And then a lot of my friends they would make fun of my speech whenever we would roast each other. So I would make fun of somebody's mom, like, because your mom, I heard your mom left, huh? She said she wouldn't go buy candles and boned out, huh? On your birthday, that's fucked up. 
And then somebody will say, fuck you, man. You, you fuck it. Don't, don't start doing my voice. Fuck you, man. That's to you know my voice. Is that, was that what the stutter sounded like? That's what they were, according to them. Right. Yeah. What was it actually? I don't know. Okay. So it wasn't that bad, but I, to right. them, I guess it was. So it would just be like, yeah, that kind of thing. And then, yeah. I don't even like stuttering around people that have one because I don't want to like trigger you into doing yeah, it. Yeah, but it, what my mine will come out during um, fear or maybe, maybe I don't even know when it came out. Maybe it started when I saw the guy getting stabbed. You know, yeah. they didn't say anything because we're all like, yeah. And did you our life stop right there? Right, but did yeah, but do there? I would assume there's a few moments like that growing up in a shitty neighborhood, and then you, did go into. NA and 12 step programs like make you realize like oh when did you start being able to like look at this stuff and be like oh man when I was a comic I met this I was hanging around with an older comic and it was like a asshole right piece of shit but it was cool you know and I, I guess he grew up with a very toxic mother also and a, I grew up with mom mom and dad he, he grew up with a toxic mom so his advice was always from his mom's point of view he goes nah bro what you gotta do dog is get a bunch of toilet paper and stuff it in your mouth and then read out loud so i said so i was like nobody ever gave me advice in my life so i got a bunch of toilet paper and um i, I started i got my book i started walking around the reservoir in silver lake so just funny. reading my book over and over over and over over and over and did it help yeah that that got rid of the stutter basically no yeah i guess yeah f for some time that's so funny and did, what did people think you were doing i don't know oh they thought we were crazy um and then you got one the need for respect and feeling slighted story of every comic life and yeah no it's, and, and then it's sometimes obsessing on the slighted feeling yeah man Oh, like like when I asked I get asked to do stuff like if I get asked to do Netflix as a joke I, I said yeah second time I always my 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 first time was I'm not gonna do this shit no more man and they asked me why because did you see that fucking did you see that all those photos at the end when they when they posted all those comics I wasn't even one of them because they were posting I was what I was saying they were posting comedians that did little as 100, 100 seater rooms yeah. that were half full. Yeah. Uh, comedians that did 200 seaters that were half full. You know, there was comedians that sold out 500 seaters, you know, Rich Chappelle, you know, well-deserving Hollywood yeah. Bowl. But I sold out the Orpheum with Paul Rodriguez. Yeah. You know, I sold it out. Then I added Paul Rodriguez on the show. Yeah. Not one photo. Not one like, oh, we had Felipe Sparza yeah, yeah. here. So then I'm still thinking about, I say to myself, you know what? This shit's just for white comics again. Then I, then I don't want to do it again. Then I have to argue with my manager and my wife. They got to talk me into doing it again. So this time I said yes. And then when the flyer came out, my name not even in a flyer. Everybody else names. And they said, well, um, they, added, they didn't have time to add it right. They didn't have time. No, but we were asking them, show us the flyer before it goes out to make sure my name is there. And my name was not on it. But yeah. I'm still doing it. Can I, you want to hear mine? And my show is sold out. <laughs> and they're still pumping up shows that <laughs> ain't selling out. No kidding, because they need to promote them. Yeah. Uh, really? they don't. You don't need promo. I don't need promo. You do your own promo. I mean, that's yeah. the, I can, I can, I, of course I relate. And it never changes. Never. It does not matter. I'm a smart comic, a white comic. It doesn't make it. They're going to, we're going to figure out a way to feel slighted. We just, yes. that, that's our sort of like, our orientation is to like, look for ways in which we're being fucked and slighted. Mine is always say this. You know what happened? I know what happened, man. They hire some little white girl who's 22 from Omaha, Nebraska, who's cute. And she don't know shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. There's just, human error, shit. and you, yeah, you'll think it's the a conspiracy to fuck you over, and and it's like, yeah. So now I see it like they hired a young millennial 
who doesn't know anything, who's just saying yes to everybody, and that person's going to move up ahead. Yeah. And by the way, and you'll keep crushing. Yeah. It doesn't make a difference. It, I get it. It's It can be like inspiring in a negative, in like it can inspire you to be great out of spite, which is like, it. by the way, I know people who, when they win awards in comedy, will look for spite. Yeah. Uh, well, intentionally, because they, meaning, I know a black comic who's in, one of the most successful comedians ever, when he wins things or, or gets some shit, He'll look for white kids saying the N-word on YouTube to, like, make himself crazy. Damn, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. So, so like, you can, it can either be delivered to you or you can look for it. Cause you, because, by the way, you're probably doing comedy for, for, that, for some slighted reason anyway. I, I, I remember when I did, um, I was in Amsterdam, and... Um, I was so, so happy that I went to the, to the side of the stage, started crying like a like a, a lost boy at my achievement, you know, and and um and I didn't know that by crying and all that, that I was gonna sabotage that moment for myself. And I did. I, what did you say? You cried before your set or after? No, afterwards. Because I was I, I crushed it at the some show I did on uh, some show called Ramon is Lot. Raymond is Lot. Uh-huh. It was uh, Ra- uh, Raymond is late. It's the, Got the it. talk show in um, yep. Amsterdam. Yep. And I killed it, bro, with my English set. And I was so happy. And I decided to go, cr- I started crying. And, um, but I remember that um, when, when um, that happened to me a lot in my life. Like I'm supposed to be like the, the greatest moment, but I but I find a way to feel sad about it. Mm-hmm. When I, I when, when I talk to my friends who grew up in my neighborhood, because I because I, t- I know a guy that's like he's a he's like an artist, a painter, and I asked him, "What do you go? Do you ever like go to a side and weep after your accomplishments?" He goes, "Yeah, because you ever try to find a way to sabotage it, even though you don't want to sabotage it." He goes, yeah. Where did that come from? You know? He goes, I don't know. I, I guess because I had so. I, so he said, he said this. I guess because I had so much shit thrown at me my whole life. I feel like they should be throwing shit at me right now, and I want it to be throwing shit. I want shit to be thrown at me. Yeah. And you get sick of, and you get tired of shit being thrown at you, and you're like, yeah. when are there going to be some flowers? And then. But uh, flowers doesn't. It's like people complain about there should be an academy, there should be an Oscar for comedy, and I'm like, I don't want. No one gets funnier by getting an Oscar. I know, man. That's like, the that's the downside of it. It's like you're not. You want your fucking name on a bill, whatever montage that's on social media that you're. What you know what I mean? Like, are you going to be funnier? I know, like. That moment in Amsterdam, I thought I remember. I don't even remember it that way as being on TV. I, I, I remember was doing heroin in Rotterdam. Same trip. Yeah, after my set, when I, after I finished crying and felt happy, I got into a fight with my partner I was with, and I just I I, I found a crack house within thirty minutes, and I just let it all go. So you you kind of fucked the moment up, you think? Yeah, I I, I, I I started smoking crack again after I was sober for like eleven years, and and heroin too. I was smoking heroin for the first time in Amsterdam. How long did you, and how long did that binge last? Oh, that one la- uh, that one lasted. I missed my flight, and they were looking for me. The people from the area, mm-hmm. and. Um, I, um, when I finally found, I got went back to the hotel room. They already had packed my stuff for me, and they gave me a ride to the airport, and they put me on a plane. And then when I landed, I went straight to party. And how long did you party for? Probably for like six months, and I stopped again for about a year. All right, well, next time something great happens, just look up videos of white kids sending. I'll send you, I'll send you a video of me saying, 
derogatory shit about Mexicans. <laughs> How about that? Instead of doing heroin, <laughs> deal. I'll go back to that. That I, I, I go back to. Let's, let's we'll go watch uh, my um, cred in a movie coming out with my name is spelled and get mad. Yeah, <laughs> fine, whatever it. Oh, it, dude, on my special, on my special, it was my first special. It's, so it, it does great. I, I cut little pieces, it goes viral, but I still think about how the guy introduced me wrong. Yeah. He said Philip Esparza. Yeah, fine. Fine. Whatever you got to do. <laughs> Whatever you got to do, just don't do drugs to get there. Because cause my mom would always find something wrong on me when I was little. Like I was telling mom, I got all A's. Yeah, but your breath really smells like shit right now. Can you get out of my face? Yeah. So you're doing don't it brush to yourself. Your teeth. I'll do it to myself. Yeah. Well, uh, another piece of advice. Just figure I, that out. Yeah. I do it myself because my mom did it to me. There you I'm go. not used to it. And then that's, that's been a problem too when women I've been, been with. They are critical of you? No, because I'm like, they're looking, how do I look? Oh, it looks great, but your ears are huge. Or one time I, I'm, I was with a beautiful girl and everything was going great. I noticed that she got a nose job and she was so pretty too. She started noticing that I was calling everybody a different name, like, hey, the Catherine, which is me, like the gentleman, this guy, the Joker. She said, what would be my nickname? And I said, Schnauzer. And then she got up and left, never saw her again. Because you're critical. <laughs> you do it to other people, yeah. gets done to you. Yeah. Yeah. I got to stop. We all got to stop. <laughs> we got to stop all this shit, Felipe. Right? <laughs> Cause I, can, I do it to random people. I'm walking, I'm hanging out with a, with a comic. I, you know, like at an airport, you hang out with a comic. You never hang out with in LA. Yeah. But you see what they are at the at LAX. Like, at LAX, yeah. you both having a coffee. I'm walking with him. Look at this big nose bitch right here, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's the job. <laughs> Philip Esparza, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>